Who's a pretty kitty? Oh wait, you're a dude. Who's a handsome kitty? Who's a handsome kitty? Yes, you are. Wanna watch some old TV shows with me, bud? All right. Let's see what's on. To catch them is my real test. To train them is my cause. Digimon, digital monsters, Digimon are like trap guns. Digimon, digital monsters, Digimon are like trap guns. Was transported to a faraway land and to the world. What the I hell? I became like a name. Now we're in this place. I used to play those games. The 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 Thumbs up. I mean, legit. Two thumbs up. Who would have thought? Pokemon, Digimon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Bakugan, and just so many countless others of, you know, kids and monsters that they can own and train and be friends with and so forth. I mean, just so many, so much of it derived from Pokemon and Digimon. It was just, you know, it's out of control and there's so many things out there. It's just like, it, it keeps coming and coming and coming and Pokemon is still a relevant thing and Digimon comes up here and there once in a while, but it's like... Just slow down, guys. I mean, I know you're trying to make your own thing and appeal to a new audience, but just come on. I mean, I'm sure some of them may have some unique ideas, some cool designs for creatures and so forth, but, you know, Pokemon and Digimon, those two were the pioneers of, you know, all these monsters and their, you know, kids who could own them and send them into battle. But there was another one, and I had no idea there was an anime based on it called... Monster Rancher. Now I played the first two on the PS1. Unfortunately, I didn't get to play the other titles, but if they hold any merit, I freaking love the games. They were definitely a unique spin on the whole monster fighting monsters genre with a very cool and, in my opinion, advanced gimmick. Because within every computer CD, game CD, and music CD, there is a monster. And that was cool. I mean, you would shuffle through all your dad's music CDs and all the games that you have and any, com any computer CDs that you might come across and you would just roll through them and try and find the coolest, best monster that you're looking for without having to worry about just having to choose between the default monsters and the, and the monsters that you can mix up between the three of them. That was a cool, cool idea because you would get all these different kinds of monsters. Once you found one you liked, you took it to your ranch and you raised it, you trained it you made it strong, you bonded with it, and then you would take it to battles to make money and rise up in the ranks and become the ultimate monster fighter. And one of the most devastating things about this was you would be playing this one in particular. Your monster would be on screen on your ranch and then poof, it collapses at some point and it's dead. That was devastating to me as a kid when my first dino just collapsed and died. I was like, oh! And then you just moved on from there. It was like, damn, that was some hard shit. I mean, I mean, yeah, it's, 
I mean, it's definitely a different thing. I mean, I mean, I know there's death and, you know, bonds of friendship and, you know, Pokemon and Digimon, but, I mean, playing a game and then actually having the thing that you raised from the start when you had it as a baby and it dies? That's cruel. That's pretty damn cruel. Monster Rancher 2 was just absolute step up and it just upped everything, the graphics and just so much of it. These were good, fun games, and I'm maybe in the future I'll be able to play the other titles, like downloadable and so forth. But, as is, I mean, if you ever get the chance, and you like Pokemon, Digimon, and so forth, this is a unique spin on it. Just try out Monster Rancher. If you can manage to find a copy, I was lucky to have these and hold on to them. But, if you're able to, definitely check them out, because they're definitely worth it. And a unique experience. Now, let's get to what we're really trying to talk about here today. Monster Rancher, the animated series. Now, does this series hold any potential whatsoever. Is it any good? Is it horrible? Is it well animated? Is it just ugly looking? Is it a pain to listen to? A pain to look at? Is it the most glorious thing ever? Well, my answer is it could have been a lot worse, but what they gave us wasn't that bad. I mean, Immediately, they throw out the Monster Rancher concept of it, which is you, the kid, taking the monster, raising it, and then sending it into battles. Here, it's more of a journey-based thing, you know, like, you know, Pokemon Digimon, where the journey is more entertaining, and you come across more monsters and more characters that way, and it's a little more engaging for a kid watching it at the time. At least it knew when it was done, it was done. To a degree. It did try to continue on past a certain point when the series should have just stopped. It just added a couple more episodes. It was just like just there just to give us a little more extra. Yes, honestly, I mean, it could have been one of those things that just kept going, but it knew it had to stop because, you know, just what makes sense for it to keep going. What they gave us wasn't bad at all. In fact, I would venture forth to say that I like it more than some of these other series in terms of the animated cartoons. Just as much, it depends. I mean, Digimon is probably a whole lot better. Pokemon is a lot more developed because it is so long and has so many movies based on it and so forth. But Monster Rancher, as a standalone thing and its own unique idea, it was good. The games were great. The animated series was good. Now, since probably none of you have ever heard of this, details and maybe spoilers. Let's go. So the kid, Genki, or, you know, Ash 2.0, sucked into the game via, you know, complex, reality-shifting, mumble-jumbo, um, alternate dimension. Zoom. He is warped into the Monster Rancher world, where he comes across Holly and Suezo. Suezo sounds a whole lot me like Meowth. He is more, of, um, he's mostly comedy relief and a little more cowardly, but he does lend some decent lessons and, uh, overcoming your fears. Plus he looks a whole lot like Cornea, so that gets points for me. And Holly is, you know, kind of the Tolkien girl at first, but you get used to her. She's she's not obnoxious or anything. She's very kind and sweet. And then she she's the one who holds the magic stone that allows them to go forth and find the Phoenix, which is the main mission. The Phoenix is the thing that will be able to destroy the evil Moo. Not M-U-U, -U, not M-U-O, not M-O-U, Moo. The villain's name is the sound a cow makes. I mean, if you look at the villain, okay, he does look like an evil cow, I'll give you that. Okay, and therefore it makes it passable for me. Moving on. And then immediately they unlock the adorable Togepi of the Monster Rush universe, except this one is a lot more useful and more in integratable in the group Mochi. An adorable duck armadillo hybrid. And then eventually you come they come across Hare, Tiger, and Golem. And then once you get the whole group together, it's all fun from there. And I love how these characters work together and how they just, you know, bond through this thing and how they don't get along, how they get along, how they deal with things, how they overcome problems. 
I love these characters. I mean, some of them are more stereotypes, because you have the badass, you have the smartass, you have the coward, you have the dried muscle of the group, you have the cute one, you have the overly hyper one, then you have the one who's average. Over the course, I mean, you spend most of your time with these characters, and you really, really get to grow and like them. Point being, I love the characters, and that is probably the biggest reason why I really like the series. I just felt more involved instead of, you know, Pokemon not being able to directly speak to the owners and, you know, them being complete slaves. The animated series definitely feels like it takes a little bit from Digimon with the best friends aspect. It definitely feels like it has that little bit of a feel, but it does have its own unique spin on it. But anyway point is I like the characters and the story is a decent journey story. You come across all of these villains that they overcome as they call it in the show the baddies and that they're the goodies and the dialogue for that is definitely childish. Weird how they call you know baddies and goodies and how somehow it amplifies a little bit of respect because there's a couple death scenes in this. They play them out kind of sad especially two of them and you're like oh god. And a lot of the villains are fun, they're obviously stereotypical and constantly, like, they're constantly failing, obviously, logically, they could have what the magic stone anytime they wanted, but to keep the series going, they're going to constantly fail. There's a certain episode in the series that would have been a perfect place to completely stop it, because it had a lot of good emotion in it. They finally defeat Mu, and it's this bittersweet ending where Genki has returned to the real world and he sees his friends one last time in the vision in the rain it's a bittersweet ending like he's he's not gonna see him again but he will always cherish the time he had and the adventures he had with them just goes back into his real life just full stride with as much energy and spirit as he has always had regardless of his loss always cherish them and always remember them it would have been a perfect ending but they wanted to keep it going a little bit more because you know it was cool to have the characters together and and to see them get reunited, and admittingly, it's very touching once they're all back together. It's very sweet. At times, the the way they dish out villains can be a little too gimmicky and a little too repetitive, despite, you know, it being a different monster every time. But in the end, we could have gotten a whole lot worse than this. It was well put together. There was a decent, easy-to-follow storyline to follow with good characters that you enjoyed seeing them work off one another. Watch them go on a journey to defeat the baddies. And it's just a fun time, and if it's not your thing, it's not your thing. You just might like Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Digimon more, but for something that could have just been a quick cash in and just pain in the ass to watch, they put some genuine effort into it. The animation could be very good at times. In fact, sometimes it was very beautiful, and other times they completely fell short because obviously different people worked on certain episodes, but... It was still well put together, there was a lot of good action, a lot of good fights. And being an anime, normally you would expect something to repeat a certain animation over and over again. And granted, they do do that once in a while, but not too much. They vary it enough to the point where it doesn't feel repetitive. So, in the end, my rating for the animated series Monster Rancher is an 8 out of 10. It has flaws, yes, but these characters are so likable and the story is decent enough and it has its own uniqueness that it completely outweighs the negative for me. So in the end, if you're looking for something other than Pokemon or Digimon that's not completely full of itself and just trying to be bigger, better, better, and cooler, this is, you know, something fun to look into. I mean, the dialogue can be cheesy, the animation may not be the best at times, the story is, can be gimmicky, but at the same time, it, it still feels very heartfelt, very genuine at times. Quite a bit of good quality here, but who am I to judge? Check out Monster Rancher and see for yourself. This has been a Wayfast Review, and we'll see you next time on Team Epic Falls.